three, four, get my shoes and out the door. Five, I'm alive, six, seven, eight, feeling great. Now I'm gonna shine, life is good. I'm doing fine, and gonna do it right and do it again, yeah. I look into the sky with all the beautiful color, but there's more than just for me, so gonna share it with another. I got to show, to give, let out, I want to sing and shout. Take a look and see a beautiful morning that turns into a beautiful evening, and together make a beautiful life. And if you wanna see, then come along with me, that's right. Welcome to Experience Michiana. I'm the show's producer, Kelsey Zumrin. Thanks so much for being with us. We have a great show for you today. We're heading up to St. Joe, Michigan to find out about the Ice Fest, which was pushed back a couple of weeks as it was delayed because of the weather that we had a few weeks ago. It'll be here in the end of the month. We're also going to go over to Merriman's Playhouse, which we were at for a lot of the holiday music that we brought you, but we wanted to find out about their transition from their old place to the new place that they have in downtown South Bend. But first, we're headed over to the Snipe Museum to see the latest exhibition that is there. Today, we're here at the Snipe Museum with curator Cheryl, and I am so excited to be here because I'm going to Ireland in a few days, and my future son-in-law is Irish, and this exhibit really focuses on Irish culture, tradition, and history as well. So tell us a little bit about what motivated the museum here to bring this exhibition. Right. Well, this exhibition is part of a much bigger project uh, called the States of Modernity that's being organized by the Department of Foreign Affairs uh, for the Irish government. Uh, this is a multidisciplinary, multi-venue uh, umbrella project uh, with events all over the world. Uh, we're providing the uh, visual component for that particular program, and uh, we were working with the O'Brien Collection, and what we wanted to do was uh, use the events of 1922 in Paris, uh, the uh, Irish Race Congress that was held there, as a sort of jumping off point uh, for this current exhibition. So what we're doing is we're juxtaposing uh, some of the artwork from uh, Ireland's uh, canonical modern artists with contemporary artists to see which uh, themes resonate uh, and which themes continue to uh, make sense today. And Shaul, you had mentioned that this piece is kind of the, the focal point of the entire exhibition. Right, a touchstone for uh, all of the artwork here. One of the aspects of uh, uh, Irish identity that really rises to the top, if you look at artists from the early part of the 20th century all the way uh, until now, is landscape. Uh, how much the Irish really identify with uh, the land uh, is really quite remarkable. So we wanted to choose this uh, painting here by Patrick Graham called Approaching Storm. It's a landscape from uh, the May County Mayo uh, on the west side of the country. Uh, and uh, you'll see that resonated in some of the 1922 generation pieces like Paul Henry's Approaching Storm Over the Bog. Uh, and you see it even uh, manifesting itself in figural paintings like Martin Gale's uh, women's work. So even though that's a figural piece that has a very ambiguous kind of unresolved narrative, landscape really pay, plays a, an important role in it. And similarly with the Sean Keating, again, a very figural painting, but the relationship between the figure and the landscape is fundamental. Now before we head on into the other gallery, sure. this painting has, it, it just caught my eye. Can you explain that or can you tell us what that's about? Yeah, so uh, this is a painting, it's a portrait of John Kennedy uh, by Patrick Hennessy. Uh, and it was, um, there, uh, John Kennedy made a trip to Ireland um, a few months before he was assassinated. And so he's like Ireland's favorite son. He was their big hero. Uh, and so he, this is actually a, a painting that's made after a photograph that was taken while he was departing uh, from Ireland, and then five months later he was assassinated. So the people in Ireland wanted uh, a, a portrait uh, made of him, and so this is one of the this is one of two portraits actually. There's another one that's still hanging in the airport uh, um, of the, that were made from the photographs uh, that came from that. It's lovely. It's, 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 it's it really caught my eyes. <laughs> it really is beautiful. Now in this gallery, sure, it's it's also continuing talking about landscape. Why is the landscape so important to to Irish culture? 
Well, um, the land is important to a lot of <clears throat> uh, countries as they gain their independence. We can see that with American landscape in the 18th century and the 19th century. We see that also in France after their revolution uh, and the Barbizon school. Uh, it's, so it shouldn't come as a surprise that it's uh, equally important to the Irish as they gain their uh, sort of political independence. Uh, we're standing here in front of Paul Henry's uh, painting uh, of a bog with a storm over it. Mm -hmm. And one of the interesting things about uh, not this particular painting, uh, but in the 1922 exhibition that was held in Paris as part of this Irish Race Congress, um, the French government bought one of Paul Henry's paintings out of that exhibition and put it into uh, the Musée Luxembourg, which was their museum of contemporary art. Mm -hmm. So with that imprimatur of the French government on Paul Henry's landscape, that really exploded landscape as a sort of touchstone for uh, Irish identity. Um, and as I was mentioning earlier, you see it in things like the Sean Keating uh, with the, the way that he is positioned in front of that mountain, sort of in, coming out of it, uh, as well as in this Jack B. Yates uh, painting of Tiernanog, where you see this figure that's just sort of immersed into the landscape, uh, reading about uh, this legend. And I do see that there's some codes at the bottom of many of the, the, the Yes, so um, there are several different kinds of, well, there are QR codes at the bottoms uh, of some of these uh, labels. This one in particular takes us to a virtual recreation of the 1922 exhibition that happened in Paris. That was, that virtual recreation online is uh, made by Billy Shortle, who's uh, at Trinity College uh, in Dublin. And uh, other of the, others of the little QR codes codes um, take us to musical compositions that were made specifically in response to these particular paintings. So these are brand new uh, musical compositions that were made for this exhibition. And we know that music is a very important part of Irish it culture is, and life. It, it is indeed. Uh, and so there will actually be a concert here on April 22nd featuring uh, Marty Fahey, who is the curator for the O'Brien Collection, where we borrowed many of these uh, paintings from. And he's also a, a musician himself and a, a sort of amateur composer. And he worked with uh, several other Irish composers. And they'll be uh, presenting a concert here on April 22nd. That sounds wonderful. Now, one of the things that I found that really struck me, I found very interesting, is that part of the exhibit, well, a large part of it, it, it speaks about the Irish diaspora. And it struck me because as an African American, I've heard that connected to the African American experience, but not necessarily to the Irish right. you know, tradition right. and, and, and their history. Right. So there, it really is a connection that between the two. Yes. Um, one of the things that I like to say about this exhibition is you don't have to be Irish to love it. There's a lot of beautiful paintings in here to look at, but many of the themes also continue to resonate with us today. And that issue of immigration and emigration and the diaspora is one of them. Uh, so the Irish uh, have they were occupied by the British uh, for centuries, and many of them, in order to find some kind of relief, uh, frequently left. So there's a large uh, Irish diaspora here in the United States. We have uh, prob probably the largest population of Irish outside of Ireland. And so, um, yes, they're, they're in Australia, they're uh, in South Africa, uh, they're all over uh, the world. And so this diaspora becomes really quite important. And that's also another uh, important link to this 1922 Irish Congress that happened in Paris. So this coming out, this kind of debut uh, for uh, Ireland on an international stage it didn't happen in Ireland, it happened in Paris. And part of the reason for that was to bring all of this Irish diaspora together from all over the world mm -hmm. to talk about uh, this new autonomy. Right. And, and the importance of stating that um, the culture is important, our traditions are yes. important, just like for 
every culture. Exactly. And it really is in the title. It's not who did they say we are, it's who do we say we are. Exactly, yeah. that's exactly right. Yep. Well, I know we have one more gallery to take a look oh, at, sure. and I'm really excited about this because it's black and white photographs, and mm -hmm. it's by a female. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. So. laughs> we, it, well, actually, there are other female artists here in the gallery mm -hmm. as well. Mani Jellett, who's also got another landscape, very uh, uh, abstract cubist, and then uh, Diana Copperwhite. Uh, hers is also abstract and vaguely landscape as well. And she's going to be... We're hoping that she actually comes and does a program with us, oh, but there's going to be a couple of virtual slow looks uh, that my colleague Bridget Hoyt is going to host, and uh, one of them will be on this Diana Copper White painting, and the other one will be on the Martingale. Oh, that sounds great. Well, I can't wait to see the photographs. Sure. Let's go. So these are the photographs by Amelia Stein, and they are stunning. Yes, what we really wanted to do was to, when we were thinking of this 1922 generation, 2022 generation, one of the things that we wanted to include was, you know, what would uh, a similar exhibition look like now? That 1922 exhibition did not include any photographs because that wasn't really on people's cognitive maps at the time, mm -hmm. but um, it certainly would be now. And uh, you can see, again, several of the same kinds of themes that continue to resonate even in her work. So for example, this uh, landscape, again, more landscapes, mm -hmm. of the turf cutting, uh, which is the cutting of the turf from the bogs, the peat that would be uh, set out to dry and then used as fuel. Right. Now the exhibition opened up on February 5th mm -hmm. and it is running till, is it May 15th? May 15th. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, and okay. there's a whole slate of programs. Uh, mm -hmm. If you want more uh, information, certainly visit our website. We have lots and lots of information on there, including a downloadable catalog uh, and a downloadable CD uh, with all of the musical compositions that have been uh, made for the, the artwork. Uh, but then also lots of programs, one of which is Cocktails with a Curator, uh, mm -hmm. and that will be David Acton. Uh, in this particular uh, part of the exhibition with Amelia Stein's photographs. We have two virtual slow looks, as I mentioned earlier with the Martin Gale and uh, the Diana Copperwhite. We have uh, a lecture from Roisin Kennedy, who is uh, an academic in Dublin, and she'll be here talking about modern Irish art. Uh, and then, of course, the concert uh, April 22nd. All right, well, Cheryl, thank you so much for the tour. Like Absolutely. I said, I'm so excited to be going to Ireland. But if you're not able to go, at least you can come here to the Snipe Museum and get a little piece of Irish history and culture. So I am joined by Danielle right now from St. Joe, Michigan. Danielle, the ice festival is happening. Uh, first of all, what is the weekend and what are the dates that it's happening? Definitely. So we did reschedule it. It normally is our first weekend in February, but it is now the last weekend. We had a little too much winter weather um, <laughs> that we had to, you know, work with snow removal and bring our ice covers back in. But you can catch this ice festival February 25th through the 27th in downtown St. Joe. <laughs> yeah, because I was thinking to myself, uh, isn't this normally earlier in the year <laughs> when it's a little bit colder? You're not too worried that it's going to warm up too much, are you? <laughs> no, you know, uh, with Michigan, the weather is so finicky. <laughs> so we're, True. you know, fingers crossed, everyone's going to do their snow day dances and hope for some colder weather at the end of the month. But um, we should be, we should be good. We just had to make sure our, our ice and our carvers could get here. So, <laughs> and I, maybe it's only because I've lived in the area for like seven years now, but I feel like St. Joseph, Michigan, and maybe it's always been this way, but I feel like that as a town, you guys have really come together to really try and promote the town as a whole over the last couple of years, even more so than before. Is that accurate or is that just something I'm picking up on? Yeah, definitely. I think it's always been, you know, we've always uh, had this importance of community in St. Joe. Um, I've been with St. Joe today about eight years now. Um, and I would I would say that's pretty accurate. Like over my time here, I've really seen it kind of grow into that. Um, but we always think, you know, um, we're just one of many beach towns uh, on Southwest Michigan's amazing shore. So the, you know, what we can do to provide, you know, things for people to come and visit us for a day and also go to South Haven, Saugatuck, Holland, you know, there's all these amazing towns within such a, um, a short drive. Um, it's, it's really cool you know and and also yeah we have the beach but there's all these other things that are you know happening inland a little bit um so it's really fun to promote just the community as a whole <laughs> I, I think it is a beautiful downtown my wife and i love walking around there we've been there several times over the winter so if we want to come along february 25th to 27th and enjoy the ice festival and what is actually going to be happening 
Yeah, definitely. I'll give you a quick rundown. Um, so what's really cool about our ice festival is that we actually have professional ice carvers come in. Um, so they're kind of all from out without the country. Like, so we got some from Michigan, Indiana, um, Pennsylvania, Ohio, and Ohio is where our ice comes. That's where our ice providers from. So on Friday night, it really kicks things off with our professional individual carving competition. Um, so that's presented by Cafe Toasty down here, but they take these frozen blocks of ice and turn them into these one block of, you know, amazing art. We've seen, you know, dragonflies, um, moons, stars, like these really cool elaborate like phoenixes and different things like that um, but that's for about three hours so they can they can work on those and then we've got a uh, fire and ice tower at 7 30 on friday night which is literally what it sounds like it's this giant tower of ice that we make a bonfire in the middle of um, and kind of and have that you know wrap up the evening on friday but that's presented by one of our awesome hotels um, in the area true by hilton and then on saturday you can see even more professional competition um, so we've got teams of carvers so those same carvers that were carving on friday night team up in teams of two and they actually take these huge eight blocks of ice so I'm about five three these things tower me you know like so these are like all over downtown um it's really cool to watch but that happens from 7 30 in the morning to 4 p.m so you got plenty of time to watch that ice interactives happen also on Saturday we've got our um frosty tic-tac-toe a frozen fish toss yes they're real frozen fish <laughs> um ice bowling and ice throne that's available all weekend long but some of our interactors are only available from 11 to 4 we've got a really cool magic tour that happens at a couple different locations on Saturday and then of course um a snowbiz scavenger hunt that really makes you go out and view all of the ice sculptures so we have about 39 this year I think just like carved ones, you know, and then on top of the ones that are created for the competition. So we've got quite the, the amount of ice displays um, this weekend, you know, February 25th through the 27th. And really um, a really cool thing to view is the scavenger hunt. You can see all of them. And then Sunday is really the day that, you know, everything is done. <laughs> so if you want like the perfect viewing day, I'd say uh, definitely Saturday evening or Sunday. <laughs> So obviously that's a lot of information yeah. and for anybody watching, <laughs> if they want to go to one place to get all that information, just in case they might have missed some of it, or they want to just, you know, be sure you, what you said, where can they go? Of course, you can always visit us online at stjoderday.com. For specific Ice Fest information, you can go to stjoderday.com backslash Ice Fest. Um, and that's actually right on our main page. So as long as you find St. Joe Today's website, you'll find the complete schedule. So stjoetoday.com. Okay. Yep. <laughs> and you know, I would really encourage people that uh, seeing the sculptors, uh, sculptures when they're actually complete is wonderful. But seeing these amazing artists actually do it, I mean, just to see it all coming together uh, and wrap up warm because it takes time. Yes, uh, but watching, <laughs> watching them do it is amazing, I think. It's pretty cool. Um, you know, some of these guys also, you know, they're chefs year round. Some of them do really awesome sand sculptures. They do like elaborate pumpkin carvings in the fall. Yeah. Um, it's pretty awesome to see. Like I said, they, these things tower us. You know, we've had phoenixes. Um, they had a really cool um, astronaut and moon one year. There's Mario and Donkey Kong. We've had unicorns, like literally anything you can imagine. I think we've had a praying mantis right outside the Welcome Center. So um, it's really awesome to see what they come up with. And a lot of them come up with the idea like right on the spot. So. Yeah. Kudos to them. <laughs> I see a block of ice. They see what it can become. And yeah. It's wonderful to see it. So once again, it's February 25th to 27th. Saintjoetoday.com is where you can find out all the information about the rundown of everything. And of course, I think St. Joe is a great example of that. When a town comes together and when a town works together to get lots of people to come visit it, it benefits the entire community. Most definitely. And we are so thankful to be um, a year round community here, uh, you know, beach town. And so we've, we've got great events that we do in the summer, but we also have these awesome, you know, things that happen in September through May. So you can check us out anytime. And we've always got something going on. <laughs> I love it. So St. Joe today dot com. Uh, Danielle, thank you so much. And good luck at your ice festival. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> This past holiday, we were at Merriman's Playhouse where we were so thrilled to be able to bring you the beautiful sounds of the season with the amazing artists and talent that we have in our community. But we also promised that we'll be back. And here we are with Stephen and Mary. And just so glad to be here because you both have such a big heart for this community and bringing music to this community. So I thought it was so funny how 2019, we were at Merriman's Playhouse featuring holiday music, then again in 2021. So now no holiday music today, but just kind of want to talk, what was your journey these past two years? Because the world has changed and things have also changed for Merriman's Playhouse these past two years. Right. Well, I guess to begin with, we switched locations mm -hmm. and, uh, and that was all inspired from the whole, whole COVID thing. We shut down, 
turned out, left that place on Mishawaka Avenue, which was wonderful, but we always wanted to be downtown, and so we thought, well, this is the time. The, we didn't have to leave the scene. The scene left us. So, so we thought, well, okay, let's do it. And we went, and we recreated the playhouse. We brought all the things, the aesthetic stuff that we could, that were sort of, that evolved over many, many years to kind of represent our aesthetic, you know, and our passion for the music and, and art and literature and dance and, and everything, you know. And, uh, and so we just brought a little bit, smooched in here and there, and, and people came in after we had accomplished that. Of course, we didn't bring everything that was over at the other place. It was sprawled out all over. And, mm -hmm. But we, this is just one room. And in this one room, we brought a little bit of what was all over, a little bit of the piano, a little bit, you know, and, and people walk in and go, oh, you brought the playhouse. Well, it, you know? I mean, can I just say it is such a beautiful space. And again, thank you so much for sharing your space with, with us um, during the holidays. But one mm -hmm. of the things that amazed me doing this show is that there's so much out here in our community. And a lot of times people don't know that. Mm -hmm. And so oh, I yeah. think this is great that we have an opportunity for people to know all of the amazing talent that is coming through here, not just in our community, but again, right. all around the world and all around our country. Now, I often thought, like, we were watching you guys when we did the show I was watching you all your trio your mm. jazz trio playing oh. it was so amazing and I kind of thought you know sometimes you see this talent you think they could be anywhere they could be <laughs> in New York or Chicago on the west coast they could be anywhere and I think it's really awesome that you have decided to be here why do you decide to be here in, in our community well part of the reason was the central location you know and I, but I was out on the road quite a bit. I lived in New York and all over the place, and Mary's from the Michigan area, and, and, and she worked enough, and we all worked enough to know there aren't very many places to work, especially if you aren't just playing the usual fare, whatever is selling. If you've got, some, if you've got a vision and you're working on something, it's just bet lost between the cracks of the culture, and you you die, you know, <laughs> or you try something else. And so that was, that's a huge part of it. But I actually grew up in South Bend, Indiana. And I went to Riley High School, and, um, and I left during, right at the, the, the end of the 70s, the late 70s, and I left. I was gone all through the 80s and 90s. And I would periodically visit my family and things like that. And, uh, and every time I would, I would always stumble on something very unique. And I would, I would fight off the urge because there was, <laughs> there was no way I was ever going to come back to South Bend because right. it just seemed like there was nothing here for me. It was just a, it was a cultural wasteland. And, uh, but every time I would come back, I would discover something that, and I would think, no, that can't be South Bend. No, that can't, you know. And, and then so this last time, and now it's been almost 20 years, and, and Mary and I got together and we started to, we, we invested in South Bend, and, but it was because we saw the potential, too. We know artists here, we know musicians here, we know, we know that there are some people, yeah, that don't, that are very apathetic and don't care about anything, and they just, but those people are everywhere. They're in New York, right, they're in Paris, they're, those same people are everywhere. And, but there are the hungry-minded, and they're right here in your own little neighborhood, right in our own little town, and there's a beautiful culture here of, of people that are incredibly diverse and interesting and intellectual and, and thoughtful and considerate and beautiful, you know, and deserve stuff like this to, to exist in their community. Absolutely. And, the, and we believe in that 100%, you know, and that's why we have devoted the rest of our lives to establishing that once and for all. And we're hoping that one day we'll be able to back away from it and it'll just kind of be its own thing. Its own. Not yet, yeah. okay. <laughs> the time is not yet. But um, how can people learn more about the series that are coming and, and the days and hours that you're open? Well, the, the only thing that's consistent with being open is our Tuesday open session and those are seven till nine. Ish. There are a lot of fun. <laughs> and, uh, that's, and that's with the local people, and it's each one's a little different. Very, very different. Yeah, that's 
we That's have, every Tuesday. And everybody volunteers at, is the house band. So um, we're all volunteers. It's all volunteers, but, uh, all for the love. But, but the, more Merriman's Playhouse, but, do you but have the a website? Other, uh, for merrimansplayhouse.org. Yeah. Okay. Um, and you can go on the upcoming concerts page, which I'm always in the process of updating. Yeah. <laughs> Just so you know. Very hard at work. So <laughs> no, it's not up to date, but it's she's February. She's all of Santa's elves. <laughs> <Right. laughs> <laughs> but um, as far as the, when the, um, usually the touring groups are Thursday, Friday, or Saturday. Okay. And every now and then a, a Wednesday if we have to squeeze somebody in, so. But it's not, it's not consistent. It's like once. So you just kind of got to check into the yeah. website. Just check in. Right. And so. it's, it's pretty much follows the artist's touring. We don't have anything just. But it is pretty, you know. it, it is, we are actually booked through the, starting into August already for an artist, for a touring artist once a week. So we're doing a touring artist once a week and a local artist or chamber group um, once a week. The other big thing that's coming, that's this, this coming, oh, that's hopefully this summer, but for sure the next summer, is that we'll be doing uh, live performances out on the, uh, in the atrium or out on the deck on the nice. East Race. And it's gonna be called the Whitewater jazz series or music series. Oh, that's nice. And it'll be, you know, touring artists and everything, big you know, bands. big bands. Wow. And, and we're going to get we'll, a show. We'll shut it. We're going <laughs> nice. to get a band show out there. And we're going to, and we're also going to be able to bring it into the atrium or out here where the ice cream place is and the, and, and, and so they'll, they'll, that is going to be a lunchtime series And that's too. working with WETF. Uh, yeah, we're working and, with WETF, and, the jazz station. And David Matthews. Oh, that's wonderful. And, yeah, David Matthews and, Hopefully we'll get some other underwriting from, from other, you know, people and we'll be able to afford it. You know, Merriman's piano, of course. And um, anyway, so we'll have a lunchtime series, too, where we have um, duets and trios and, you know, two students. Maybe even like you know, Notre Dame's choir. Yeah, Notre Dame choirs nice. and things or, like that. I think choirs. <laughs> or, or bring or some, some we, can, we can put it together. Or Uzima. Oh, yeah. got to bring that out here. Yeah. Yes. And, but, um, and then, but then the whole, every lunchtime, I want to try to have something going out there. Good or bad weather, you just brown bag, you get your lunch or whatever, and you brown come bag and, and just come and, on and, and just enjoy. Come in and hang out. And listen, well, I, yeah. I think the big thing is keep checking that website because yeah. there's so much going on yeah. at Merriman's Playhouse. And from South Bend, from our community to you, just want to say thank you. Thank you for what you're doing, and please keep doing it. <laughs> it's our pleasure. Well, that's it for today's show. Thanks so much for being with us. Remember, if you're out experiencing things in Michigan, be sure to post about it and use the hashtag Experience Michigan. That way, maybe we can share it with our audience, too. If you have other ideas, you can hit us up on Facebook or email us, and we'd love to find out about what you're experiencing in Michigan. So until next time, have a great week, everybody. Experience Michigan is made possible in part by the Community Foundation of St. Joseph County and the Indiana Arts Commission, which receives support from the State of Indiana and the National Endowment for the Arts. This WNIT local production has been made possible in part by viewers like you. Thank you.